Hey guys, this is Michael from Team 4411S, and uh, as of today, I'm going to be starting a little tutorial series on programming with pros. So I've gotten a lot of requests, whether it be in the comment section of my previous videos or DMs in Discord, because uh, people have been having a little bit of trouble getting started with pros, um, getting to know the API, getting to know the different programming style that it comes with, um, as opposed to VCS or VexCode. So uh, before we get started, I'd just like to point out that if any point throughout these tutorial series, um, if you have any trouble following along or understanding how a certain function works, feel free to check out the uh, Pros3 API. Just visit this URL, I'll put it, the link down in the description, or you can uh, just Google it and you'll eventually get to this API. So this basically has um, a list of like every function we're going to be doing C++. So for example, if you want to find out how the motor functions work, uh, this has a list of all of them. Uh, extensively, parameters, descriptions, returns, etc. Okay, so let's get started. So we're going to create a new project with this file path, and we're going to wait for pros to make it. Now, uh, once pros, sorry, before I do say anything, um, do you understand that for the entirety of my VEX career, I've said pros and not pros, so I will still say that on occasion. I'm getting used to it. Sorry, bear with me. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do in our pros project is delete all the stuff in OP control. Um, it is not necessary. It's there by default, but you're going to be overriding it anyway. Okay, so very first thing, don't worry about any of this stuff. Only worry about the include folder and the source folder. Uh, the source folder is going to have your three main um, files that you're going to want to know about, which are your OP control file, which is um, for driver control your autonomous file, which is going to, what it's going to run in autonomous, and your initialize file, which is what the robot runs whenever it connects to the controller. So for example, um, later on in this series, we're going to be using a gyroscope um, for our uh, drivetrain functions. And you want the gyroscope to initialize because it needs a, a, about a two second brief period to calibrate itself. That's going to go in this initialize file. Okay, so um, before I get started on the actual coding part, um, I just want to mention that this episode is only going to be going over the structure of our program and setting up the uh, globals file, which we will get to in a second. Um, if you're going to be looking for, if you're looking for like specific function tutorials like driving, uh, PID control, that will come later on. Give me time. Okay. Um, so to begin, you'll notice that in this include folder, everything's a header file. You'll notice because it either says .h or, for example, .hpp. Whereas in the source file, everything is .cpp. Um, and the reason this is, is because, for example, if we look in our um, adi.hpp, it's going to have a bunch of different function headers. So for example, uh, get new press, for example, is a function header. You don't see the actual text of the function because it's only declared here, not um, actually written out. Whereas in our uh, op control file, You'll notice these two braces, which mean that this is the actual function text. So you're actually making the function here. So to recap, uh, .h or .hpp files are just for function headers, whereas the .cpp files are for the actual text. Okay, so as far as structure goes, I like to make a file for each mechanism. So we're going to be doing a folder that holds all of our mechanism files. We're going to call it subsystem headers. Now, uh, bear with me, my naming convention might not always be the best, but it works for me, and that's what I'm going to be teaching people. Okay, so, uh, oh, sorry, didn't mean to open that. Let's close that. Okay, so we're going to be creating a file for every single mechanism that we're going to have. So the first one's going to be our drive.hpp file. And you're going to notice that while I'm creating these, Pros is going to be making a lot of tabs. Um, we're not going to be using most of them um, for now, because right now we're only going to be dealing with a specific file that we're going to be making right now called global. Can't type today. Globals.hpp. Okay, so the other ones you can close. Um, Globals.hpp is going to be storing like your motors, your controller, stuff that you want global access to. Whereas all of your uh, mechanism files will be holding stuff that's specific to that mechanism, just for the sake of organization. Now that we've made our header files in our include folder, 
we're going to be making a folder in our source folder called subsystem files. I don't know. See, naming convention not the best right now. But uh, let's make our I don't know drive dot cpp file, and then we're going to do that for all of them. So bear with me just a second. Uh, we've done drive intake lift angular. And lastly, our globals.cpp file. Okay, so the very first thing you're going to want to do is go to your main.h file because this is what everything has. So, for example, your op control file includes main.h, so does autonomous, and so does initialize. So everything that's in the main file also gets included in those, meaning you get access to them. So um, in our main file, we're going to want to include all our mechanisms because you want everything to have access to your mechanisms. So you'll notice if you scroll down to the very bottom, it says you can include C++ when the header's here. So this is where we're going to include stuff like uh, our drive.cpp file. Okay, I did not type that correctly. Um, subsystem header. Oh, did I type something wrong? Um, I don't believe that I did. Oh, yes, I did. Wow, I'm stupid. I put CPP on HPD. Amateur programmer here, sorry. And we're going to do this for every single one of our files. So let's do lift. Let's do angular. Let's do intake. And let's do globals. Okay. So now that everything is included in main, everything that has access to main also has access to these, if that makes any sense. Okay, um, and now the last thing you want to do is go into all of your um, files and include main because you want it to have access to main. Now this might not be the best programming practice, but this works for me, and that is what I'm going to do. So let's just paste this here. Um, I'm going to be actually closing out of this stuff. Okay, did I include it here? No, I did not. Uh, let's do this. Okay, so now everything has main.h included. We're going to go ahead and also do this in the uh, C++ files. I'm going to close out of that. I'm going to close out of this. Okay. So today we're only going to be working with our uh, global files. That's because we're just going to be setting up the basic structure. And we've already done half of it. We've already set up our uh, different files for our different mechanisms. But now we're going to be doing something that sets up our motors. So or let's comment a section for motors. And so um, one thing you're going to notice when I'm doing this is this prefix I'm going to be using called extern. What this means is that it uh, it's used when you want something to have global access to a variable. So for example, we're going to make a motor called, uh, I don't know, our lift motor, for example. So what this is doing is declaring that there's a lift motor somewhere in the program. And then when it comes time to use it or define it, for example, in our globals.cpp file, uh, we're going to be able to do that. Okay. So for example, now that we have our lift motor declared here, we can actually initialize it in this file. So this is where we actually put in the parameters for it. So the first of which is going to be your port. Um, so let's just say one for the lift, for example. And then the next thing you want to do is declare the gear set of the motor. So what this means is um, you have three different options. You'll notice down here at this text, the uh, 06 option is for 600 RPM cartridges. The 18 option is for 200, and the 36 option is for 100. So we're going to assume our lift is a 100 RPM gear set. The next thing is whether or not it's reversed, uh, meaning like if you put a positive voltage on it, it'll go forwards. But if you want it to go backwards instead, then you would set it to true. We're going to set it to false for now. We can type. And then the last part is the encoder units. So for example, uh, you have three different options. I'll show you now. Motor, encoder. So you have three different options, not counting invalid, of course. You have counts, which is the raw encoder ticks, similar to a quadrature encoder. You have degrees, which is also kind of similar to a quadrature encoder because it is 360. And uh, you have rotations. I like to use counts just because um, it gives you a much wider range and I like the accuracy that that provides. Okay, so 
now that we've gone over what it takes to initialize a motor, we're going to do that for the rest of them. So we're going to do our angler, uh, we're going to do our intake motor, so we're, we're going to pretend we have a, this robot's going to basically going to be a goofy copy, uh, as most people are doing, because this is going to be a basic tutorial, and we're going to be copying a basic robot, and that was, that was not a, a stab at them or anything. I mean, it's just a pretty simple robot, so and it works effectively. So we're going to do drive left back. Uh, I should probably be copy pasting this. Okay, so we're going to do drive left front because simple four motor base. Okay, so now we have our motors uh, declared. Now we're going to initialize the rest of them. So I believe uh, it was Angler. We're just going to assume it's two. We're going to assume the gear set uh, is. I would probably also assume it's a 100 RPM cartridge. We're going to assume it's false for now. This is obviously subject to change for you guys, depending on how you mount your motors. Uh, do do decoder counts. Okay, so we're just going to copy paste this for the rest of them. So we're going to do this for our intake left, do intake right. Um, I might be speeding through this, it's my, my bad, but I think this is pretty basic stuff that you guys can follow pretty easily. Okay, back, drive right, front. So we're going to number these ports 1 through 8, obviously it does not I mean, this doesn't matter for me because I'm not making a robot, I'm just doing the code. But for you guys, these ports are obviously subject to change depending on what you plug them into. We're going to assume our um, intake motors are on 200 RPM cartridges just because I feel like that's pretty standard. And then we're going to assume that our uh, drivetrain is also on a 200 RPM cartridge. Uh, as for the reverse part, so we know one of them for the intake is going to be true because they're obviously on opposite sides. And for the drive, if it's just a standard direct 200 RPM drive, then the left side is going to be false and the right side is going to be true. Uh, hopefully I'm right on that. Okay, so now that we've made all of our motors and declared them, uh, the next thing we're going to take care of, and probably the last thing for now, is just our uh, controller. So we're going to be doing a lot of other stuff with the controller throughout this um, tutorial series, but for now we're just going to initialize the motor itself. So we're just going to call it controller, you can name it whatever you want. And then you have to specify what type of controller it is, oh sorry, uh, so whether or not it's the master or the partner, because if you're doing um, dual controller setup then obviously you're going to want one that's uh, using the partner as well, you're going to need two controllers. Okay. Oh, that's my bad. I tried to initialize it here. Okay, so you're just declaring the controller here, and then you're initializing it in the C++ file. Okay. Oh, I don't know why it did that in lowercase. The uh, editor has a little bit of quirks, but nothing you can't work around. Okay. So we're creating a controller object, that, and now we're defining it. Or so we're uh, initializing it here. I don't know why I keep typing motor. So if you wanted to make a, uh, if you're doing dual driver setup for whatever reason, I don't know why, um, in this game, you'd make a second controller that you'd put eController master, I mean eController partner instead. Okay, so now that we've set up our motors and our controller, um, that's basically all we're doing in this tutorial. Um, one other thing, we're going to make a miscellaneous section that's going to hold some like defines, like for example, um, if you have a certain position that, uh, or a certain number that marks a position for the angler, I don't know, like a certain number of ticks on a potentiometer. Um, so like, if you wanted to name it uh, angler pot uh, vertical. So this would be like the number that the angler potentiometer is when it's straight vertical, if you put a potentiometer. Um, and maybe it's at 3000. So you put that and if you ever want to refer to that position, you don't have to put 3,000 and memorize that number. You can just put this text instead. But we don't know that just yet, so we're just going to leave that section blank. Okay, so just to recap, we've created our project. Um, these folders and stuff don't matter. Um, 
we've created our subsystem headers folder, our subsystem files folder. And remember that headers uh, are for function and like object declarations. So you don't specify all the parameters for it. Whereas the C file, it actually specifies, sorry, my bad, the parameters for it. Okay. Um, so the next tutorial, we'll probably be covering the specific mechanisms and how to set up functions for that. Pretty basic as well, but let's take it slow. Okay, so that concludes uh, the first tutorial. Hopefully I'll be back with you guys soon. We will see. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.